Okay, so you've got off-roading and now you have some cleaning to do. This is after just one run on concession. While not very dirty, the Jeep is still covered in mud, grime, debris, and a boatload of dust. All this has to come off as soon as possible, because when mud dries it becomes sand. The primary component is sandpaper. We all know what happens when metal comes into contact with sandpaper. The metal goes away. So it's really important to remove this gunk to minimize wear. In this video, I'll be going through my process of getting my Jeep back into shape after an off-road adventure. This is not a how-to video. This is a how I do it. I'm sure someone will think I'm doing it wrong, and that's okay, you do you. I'm using the things I like to get the result I want. I will include the products that I use to get the job done, but there will not be any video links in the description below. I don't sell stuff, I don't have any affiliation with anyone who sells stuff. And I don't really want to read where something's available somewhere else for 18 cents less. If you're watching this video, you're already on the internet and presumably know how to use Google. I start by pulling the Jeep onto my lawn and simply flicking a sprinkler underneath. Turn it on and let the water loosen all the built up mud and grime on the bottom. I'll move the sprinkler around a couple times to make sure everything on the underside gets covered. I leave it in each position under the Jeep for about 10 minutes or so to give the water a good chance of success. This gets a bunch of organic material removed, keeps it off the driveway, and waters the grass at the same time, though so some will later be on the driveway anyway, but it will be greatly reduced. Now I'll pull the Jeep back out onto the driveway where the rest of the process will take place. I don't actually wash the Jeep on the grass as the chemicals will likely kill off whatever little grass I've been able to grow there. Right back underneath the start. Here I use some all-purpose cleaner. I like Super Clean. I've diluted it about 5 to 1 with water because straight Super Clean is just way too strong and I waste the product. I use a pump sprayer so I don't have to keep squeezing a trigger. I just get everything coated in the APC mix as much as possible. Now I use this handy little pressure washer attachment to rinse off the APC. I try to hit it from as many angles as possible and cover as much area as I can to blast away the now loosened dirt. I'll work from side to side and from both ends. While we have the APC out, might as well hit the engine compartment. I'm not going to worry about covering multiple things. This isn't a full engine shampoo, it's just a maintenance wash. Even things like the alternator will be just fine with the amount of water it's going to see. The only thing I block off is the air intake. And I'm also just careful not to spray a bunch of water in there anyway. I'll hit the big stuff with a soft bristle brush just to agitate the dirt and make it rinse away uh, much easier. I 
as you can see by how fast I'm moving my hand and the pressure washer wand, not a lot of water is getting on anything. It's more of a light rinsing just to get the APC and the dirt and grime that's been loosened off the engine components. I'll shoot down the sides and around the back just to clean things up a bit. If you do the same before you finish up, remember to take the rag out of the intake or it'll get sucked in as soon as you start the Jeep and you'll be wondering why it runs like crap, if at all. Now we move on to the wheels, usually the dirtiest part of the vehicle. I use PNS Brake Buster to get the job done here. I'll start by using the power washer to rinse off any loose dirt before using any cleaner. Now I'll spray some brake buster on the inner fenders, the tires, and the wheels. I use it full strength here. Then hit the tires with a stiff bristle brush. You see all the browning from the nastiness that's stuck on there. I use a barrel brush to get into the inner parts of the wheels and get them clean. And then finally I'll finish the wheel faces with a soft bristle brush. Just to help agitate all that dirt. Can brushes scratch wheels? Sure, but I off-road my Jeep. Scratched wheels is already something I live with. After the wheels, I use that same soft brush to get the inner fender wells and just uh, remove the gunk that's up in there. Too. A good rinse with the pressure washer and uh, you'll see all the brown and dirt just melt away. After the first wash, I usually go back at the tires a second time, or as many times as needed. I use brake buster diluted here about 5 to 1. Once all the foam that builds up is no longer brown and it's just pure white, that's when you know the tires are clean. Now just repeat the whole process again another three times. Rinsing, spraying, scrubbing, re-rinsing. Just keep at it until all the dirt's gone. When you do finally get the tires clean, that final rinse is pretty satisfying. Mm -hmm. 
On my Jeep, I hit the steps next. These aren't painted, but powder coated, so I don't mind letting the pressure washer loose on them to blast away. There is one specific spot of the JLs that holds a ton of dirt. I'll spray inside the front fender flares until no more muddy water is running out. The rears don't seem to have the same issue. I'll move on to the front bumper and make sure to hit the inside really well. And also the front bumper skid plate and winch mounting plate. Of course I'll get the other side done too. And don't think that the tires are all done yet. Gotta move the Jeep back a foot or so to expose the area that was on the bottom before and couldn't be washed. Finally we're onto the painted surfaces. I'll start by spraying a rinseless wash onto the paint. I use Optimum No Rinse or ONR mix 256 to 1 and another pump sprayer. I don't like hitting the dry paint with pressure washer right away as that can just drive the mud and sand into the finish and cause scratches. The LNR does a good job of wetting the surface, encapsulating a good portion of the dirt so it can be easily rinsed away with minimal paint damage. I continue around the whole Jeep and even hit the plastic windows on the soft top. ONR is a polymer based cleaner so it's perfectly safe to use on plastic. You can see here how using the ONR just dissolves the mud and grime and really makes it easy to wash away. And now I do the initial rinse with the pressure washer, going around the whole Jeep and just knocking off any loose debris and dirt and getting it ready for the next steps. Paying close attention to get into the jaw jams and help flush out the mud that's caked up in there. Now we're actually going to wash the paint. Here I'm using Adam's Car Shampoo. It's what I had on hand and is a good pH neutral soap that doesn't contain any waxes or polishes. I'll start with a foam can, laying a thick layer of foam on everything, including the soft top. Usually just the foam and rinse is enough to get the fabric on the top clean. The rest of the foam I'll just paint it on like you were painting a car. Now I'll move on to the contact wash. 
I'm going to use the two bucket method. One for the wash solution and the other as a rinse bucket to clean the wash medium. I like to use the foam cannon to activate the wash solution in the bucket. It makes thick suds that last forever. I make sure and use back and forth movements with the wash mitt. No circles. It's possible to induce some scratching anytime I'm touching the paint, and circular scratches are way more noticeable than straight ones. I just continue washing, flipping the mitt, dunking it in the rinse water, washing it out, back into the soap, and moving around the whole Jeep until everything's been washed. And now the final rinse the pressure washer. I'll take my time here. I want to get all the soap off of the surface. Luckily the Atom shampoo rinses fairly easily and doesn't leave anything behind. As with any car washing project, it's uh, not something that should be done in direct sunlight that can be avoided. And luckily it's a cloudy day today and it wasn't so hot that the soap would dry onto the surface before it could be rinsed. While the pressure washer is still out, I'll hit the wheels with some Gion Wet Coat. This is a spray-on, rinse-off spray sealant that will apply some protection and make cleaning the wheels easier next time. It's so easy to use and you can really see the water beating up right after it's rinsed away. Just like washing them, got to do it three more times. Now the last step is to dry the Jeep. I'll use PNS Bead Maker as a drying aid here. Simply shoot a couple sprays of Bead Maker onto each panel and go over it with a microfiber drying cloth. I'll make my way around the whole Jeep one more time, spraying and wiping, getting all the water off the surface. I don't let the Jeep air dry because then you'll basically just get water spots. Simply going over it one time with microfiber to cloth eliminates that from happening. Oops, that was the second last step. For the last one, make sure to just wipe off the door jams. 
Inside the door jams will hold a little bit of water and probably a little bit of dirt left over. So hitting the bottoms of the doors and all around the frames will just clean everything up. There, we're done. Is it perfect? Nope. But I wasn't detailing the Jeep, I was just washing it. And I'm satisfied with how clean it is. It's ready for my next trip. By the way, as a little bonus, that uh, pressure washer attachment that washes the underside of the Jeep also makes a great water room for cleaning the residue off the driveway. Hey, thanks for watching.